Hello everyone, welcome to my next video on our creating a, an advanced NSC4 test lab environment. Now, up to this point, this is video like 10, official video 10, um, we're done. I think there's enough here for you guys to roll with it, alright? So, uh, now everything going forward is technically going to be bonus in the sense of, you know, hey, I think it'd be cool for you guys to have but you know it's definitely not required and one of the big things that uh, that you're gonna find especially in the lessons in class and what have you is is a domain controller active directory right we can use things like LDAP to do authentication remotely we can use things like you know Fortinet single sign-on without a domain controller we can't do that and also in my humbled opinion uh, one of the easiest ways to throw up a throw up bleh, to throw together a uh, a CA a certification authority right that's trusted automatically through several devices locally is through an enterprise CA through Active Directory Domain Services so uh, that's what we're gonna do here in this in this next set of series now I I've, I've been recording these things way too long meaning like the the videos themselves have have become longer than I wanted them to so in this video specifically we're going to power on our domain controller and this is actually the domain controller that uh, we we added in at the very beginning of these of these uh, videos so um, now once that's booting up here I'm gonna double click you can watch it actually booting um, it is still going to take us a minute to get it loaded up so um, there's nothing I've done here in this machine other than just importing it in. So uh, this is using the virtual machine from GNS3. I imported in exactly how it was. Now I have not used this flavor of uh, virtual machine before. So uh, you get to discover with me what kind of limitations might might be there. So. Um, once again, this video is just going to be setting up the server itself, not necessarily promoting it to a domain controller. So um, if that does not come alive here in a few moments, I am just going to have to pause the video. I'm actually surprised it's still not killing my system like Windows 10 did. Um, it still takes a little bit to boot, and you got to give these virtual machines credit. I mean KVM kernel based virtualization machines using the QE uh, EMU nested within GNS3 on a on a separate hypervisor. You got to admit that's pretty darn impressive that all of this can run off of my laptop uh, only taking up a fraction of the resources. So um, but let me go ahead and be a little more patient here and I'm gonna hit pause and just go grab some water and hopefully when I get back it will prompt us for a login screen so alright guys I'll be right back alright and of course the second that I said I'd be right back and I recorded the I, I hit the pause button on the video I got the login screen so <laughs> thanks that's all I had to do so alright guys so to hit the alt control delete to sign in using GNS3 uh, this is tight VNC viewer and there is the little icon right up there in the corner so we'll hit it and uh, we set the password when we first booted up this image alright and once again I'm not too sure about the limitations so uh, it definitely has to be some kind of trial so there you guys go so it's gonna be uh, good for 180 days and that is as you drag and drop and deploy so right away it found the network I'm gonna hit yes now we're not going to use DHCP off of the bat, but you know that's cool. Um, here we are, our server manager. Uh, but I mean, if it's data center evaluation, we should be able to promote it to a domain controller just fine. And if you need another one, you can drag and drop it in there, and you got a whole another 180 days and two, three, four machines that you can you can uh, put together all you want. I also use GNS3 in my um, Microsoft server classes too. Just to let you guys know. It's a real nice platform to accomplish that also. Uh, so here we go. So it's going to take a little bit to think, but the main place we're going to want to start, you know what? The main place we're going to want to start, let's go down here. Let's do a right click. 
and just like we did with the other machines let's go to system all right and let's actually turn off any kind of like graphics now this is a server right so there shouldn't be any there shouldn't be much frou-frou there to begin with um, but let's double check so come on you can do it buddy once again it has two gigs of RAM you might want to think about increasing that to four and maybe even two processors if you have the uh, resources to spare okay uh, but let's go to our advanced remote settings and let's go to performance and just make sure yeah see I didn't think there was gonna be much here um, and there's not <laughs> so that's fine uh, we'll take off a little bit of font font smoothing I don't know how much that's gonna increase but I just also wanted to confirm that I have the two gigs um, so on and so forth and we'll come back here later when we change the name of the PC but for right now let's go ahead and uh, uh, go back to our server manager and let's go to local server and this is where we're gonna spend most of our time in this video is doing things here so uh, for starters the very first thing I'm gonna want to do simply because it's a test environment is to turn off that firewall so where it says Windows firewall there I'm gonna go ahead and flip it off alright now you can turn that on especially that is great for when you are practicing uh, firewall rules right punching firewall rules in and out but for um, for this environment I want to leave it off because I'm, I'm focusing on the FortiGate so uh, there's step one and this does not update in real time it updates every few moments so if that's bugging you you come over here and hit the refresh see how it turned off alright so remote management that's fine remote desktop I doubt it we're gonna be doing any kind of our um, uh, remote desktoping this is the next one we're gonna want to handle and that is IP4 addressing by DHCP so uh, here we go we're gonna go to our properties alright we are gonna go to our IP4 settings and our domain controllers usually do not get IP addresses via DHCP so that's also why I purposely put the scope pretty pretty high up there when I did it through the uh, FortiGate so here we go 10.0.1.10 is going to be our domain controller going forward right with the 255 255 255 all right and then the default gateway will still be our FortiGate so now when it comes to the DNS server all right I usually pick something like uh, Google's DNS or, or what have you uh, because the reason why once we promote this to a domain controller it's going to be our local area networks DNS resolver so if you pick something that's like the the FortiGate right um, you can do that too and have the FortiGate pass it along to maybe the FortiGuard services I don't really care right um, which one you decide to do but for for right now I am gonna just pick Google's DNS knowing with confidence that when I promote it to a domain controller it's really going to forward it to um, itself <laughs> right then forward it out to the internet so um, hope that made sense uh, it's the end of the day guys I'm like Mur. here we go so alright so that is set okay so no longer do I have to worry about um, my IP address is changing okay so that should be good also uh, if you notice here our time zone is different so I'm gonna change this alright and I am in Phoenix so I'm gonna pick Arizona okay and also uh, I don't know what it is about this GNS3 environment but the system clock always gets messed up so you lose the ability to get this internet time tab once it becomes a domain controller because it becomes like the master MTP server for your network so we're gonna come here and just force update it right away so uh, it said there was an error but if you come down here you can actually see that no it, it did it's fine alright so we're gonna hit OK so that's taken care of alright we don't need to mess with the product ID uh, let me hit the refresh up here real quickly see where we're at so alright so recognize the IP address now okay good good Arizona time wonderful now you have to ask yourself are you gonna be doing much on this machine 
uh, in regards of like surfing the internet or, or what have you. And that's fully fine if you do. In a test environment, there is nothing wrong with that. Okay, guys? Um, in fact, in my Fortinet class, uh, we are working out of a domain controller the whole entire class. So it feels like a desktop. Well, it is a desktop, but it's an actual domain controller. So uh, anyways, I do not want to fight their little uh, Internet Explorer enhanced security. So I turn that off. I do not want to participate in the improvement program. It's kind of not relative if you're if you're not actually doing this in production. Um, but you know what, guys? I am not going to lie here. It would probably be best practices, okay, to turn on that automatic updates. All right? So while it is licensed for that 180 days, I mean, we might as well come out here, click Next, right? Uh, let me choose the settings. And uh, you can practice your patch management. So we'll check, we'll check for updates. All right? But let me choose whether to install them. Let me choose whether to download and install them. And also give me recommendations for other updates and Microsoft updates. Because you know what? We're choosing them. So nothing, nothing's going to hurt giving us options. So I'm going to hit OK there. All right. And then I'm just going to let it do its thing in the background while I'm messing around. All right. So here we go. Let's hit X. OK. And uh, yeah. So now, uh, what else? What else? You know what? I might as well go to Internet Explorer. Oh, that still cracks me up. I know it's probably old as dirt, but I heard it for the first time not that long ago. I'm like, Internet Explorer. I'm going to go to Night Night, and I'm going to grab some tools, because you know what? I'm probably going to be working out of here a little bit, and I definitely do not want to use uh, IE all the time. So here we go. I'm going to get my Night Night. All right, and as you can tell, it's 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 doing its update thing in the background, and uh, there's going to be a little bit more to load there while it's doing all of its changes, and that's fine. You can actually take a look here what your CPU utilization is. All right, so don't use the recommended settings. Why? Because I'm not going to use you longer than going <laughs> and getting something else. There's nothing wrong with IE. I'll have to say that to, to keep my Microsoft certs. All right. Here we go. But we're going to go to Night Night. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get let's go ahead and get some software. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, seriously? Did it crash or something? What What is up with that? All right. This is why we're going out to Night Night. And we're doing that. All right. Here we go. Maybe, maybe. So, uh, last installed updates. Okay. I didn't realize that checking for updates would jump my CPU utilization by by almost triple. All right. Mental note: next time, do that last. Turning on scanning for updates. All right. So here we go. All right. Let's go to Night Night. Looks like I try to go to it. Oh, did I even spell that right? I'm going to get a typo squatted here. Yeah, look at that. Typo squatting. All right, night night. See, look at that. Oh, so shady. All right, here we go. The real night night. <laughs> okay. I at least want Opera. All right, I at least want like a, a terminal emulator. Maybe some 7-zip. Um, where's my putty? There we go, putty. Heck, I'll just I'll just do these two too. So um, I'll come back in the future if I ever want anything else. So um, all right, but let's get our night night. And once again, I'm just probably gonna pin it right there to the desktop. So um, all right, so it should pop up here. We'll hit a save this time, just in case we have to run it twice instead of just run. So here we are. All right. Excellent. So we'll let that run in the background. All right. Not too bad. And while that's doing its thing, let's go ahead and come back to our uh, uh, server manager. All right. 
And let's go to our last check for updates. I'm going to see if I found anything. And I guess the key here, guys, is just especially during the initialization process of setting this all up, just be patient. So it, it will speed up, I promise you. Uh, we're just kind of trying to multitask here. And you can see I'm getting impatient and clicking too many times. Um, yeah, it looks like it hasn't found anything yet. So, But that's not a big deal. It's just eventually you're going to want to download the updates just to get into a, a good practice of doing that. So I guess technically you don't have to, but uh, you might get into some weird issues too with 40 clients or or what have you with compliance C checks. Oh, oh, the first yawn. Okay, here we go. So while Nine Night is doing its thing, all right, uh, let's go ahead and do the second part, and that's before we set this up to a domain controller, I am changing that computer name. See how it's uh, some kind of random generated blah, 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 blah? Yeah, not so much. So I'm going to go ahead and click that computer name. All right. All right. Let's try and. Okay. I'm going to hit change and I'm going to change this computer name to DC1. Very original, right? But when we promote it to a domain controller, it's going to use a fully qualified domain name with the domain controllers uh, or the. the uh, our, our pseudo company's domain name. So uh, DC1 is just fine. This is part of our naming convention or what have you. It could be also like, you know, Site1 or Tempe or, or DC or what have you. Now it says uh, you must reboot your computer before this will happen. All right. So uh, I thought it gave us the option if we want to do it now or later, and I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to wait till these <laughs> finish installing, and then I'll hit OK, even though I'm pretty sure it says now or later, but I uh, just don't want to interrupt that process here. It will reboot the DC, but that's OK, because it's in our test environment. All right? OK. There we go. Okay, good times. All right. And you know what? I'll actually, uh, based off of the, um, see, I knew there was a prompt. I just wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't risking it. We'll restart now. Um, based off of the, the last couple of videos, you guys should be able to pin those uh, to the taskbar if you want to. Load up uh, Opera and also pin the websites that you're going to use often, just like we did with the management PC. Okay. Uh, because in this test environment, especially if you're doing this to practice the things that we learned about in class, there's nothing wrong with working out of the DC. So, um, in fact, I'll probably uh, show you guys how to increase the resources on these things a little bit later. And as you can see, see how much faster that booted up? All right. So just kind of as a testament that, you know, uh, things do move along a little bit quicker once the initialization process is, is, is done. So uh, there we go. And as you can see, we now have Opera and Putty and all that good times. Let me minimize this real quickly. I'll just move that over. Uh, I'll probably unpin PowerShell just because I, I'm actually a fan of PowerShell. I'm just not going to use it in these classes very often. But maybe I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll pin this to the taskbar so I look cool. There we go. All right, so we're almost done here. Let's go to local server and just make sure that our settings uh, all right, were preserved. OK. And that actually all looks good. All right, not too bad. So guys, good times. We'll leave it there for right now. So when we get into the next video, uh, we will go ahead and we will promote this to a domain controller. Uh, right now, it's just a Windows server. So, um, yeah. So, I'll see you guys in the next video.